We're now learning new details about the deadly crash involving a driverless Uber SUV that hit and killed a pedestrian in Arizona. Federal investigators now say the autonomous car detected the pedestrian six seconds before the crash, but it didn't stop because the emergency braking had been disabled. The National Transportation Safety Board released the finding as part of a preliminary report on the crash. Investigators say emergency braking maneuvers are not enabled while Uber's cars are under computer control in order to reduce the potential for erratic behavior. For more on this, we're joined by Wall Street Journal tech and auto reporter Tim Higgins. Uh, Tim, for the life of me, I can't understand that logic about not having the emergency braking on. It, it seems to me that the whole point of the driverless, the, the driverless technology is that it can see and react before humans can. And that woman on the bike, we all know she came out of nowhere and we saw what happened. She was killed. Yeah, you're, you're right in some of your questions here. The, clearly, the report said that uh, the, the sensors could detect her uh, six seconds early. And that means if you do the math, the car should have had enough time to stop. It, uh, if you do the math out, it comes to about three seconds needed to, to stop entirely at that speed. What's going on here is that that Volvo car had automatic braking system that comes standard. And what Uber does is it disconnects it because it's concerned that the signals from that system will confuse its autonomous car system that's driving the car. Essentially, you can only have one master controlling the car. The problem, experts say, is that they didn't have an automatic backup to handle emergency braking or emergency maneuvers um, with their own system. The backup was the human, and the human didn't realize there was a problem. Well, we could see clearly when you look at the human, because there was a camera on her, that she wasn't even paying attention. Uh, Tim, all of that being said, if that's the case, why are these cars even on the road anyway? It would seem to me that you would want to figure these things out before you put them on real roads with real people. If I was the father of that woman who was killed, I would be livid. You are getting at one of the biggest questions that autonomous cars are facing right now is how safe is safe enough? And one of the debates is should you be practicing or, or testing on public roads or should you be doing more of this in, in what we call simulators, essentially uh, computer worlds that can replicate the real world? Um, experts would say it needs to be a mixture of both. Um, but they also say in this scenario, um, that they, there are really some concerns raised about the fact that the, the safety operator doesn't seem to be paying attention. That's why they're there, is to kind of avoid these scenarios. Tim, I'm wondering, what's your thought in an overall sense on, on driverless cars? Honestly, um, I just can't see myself ever sitting in the back of a driverless car, working on my computer, without thinking at all about the fact that a computer is driving the car. Can you picture that? Well, a recent AAA uh, survey found that uh, a greater number of people also don't necessarily trust the idea. Uh, so you're in good company there. And it really comes after these, these headlines these, that we see from this Uber crash and then the uh, headlines we saw out of the Mountain View crash involving the Tesla Model X that had a semi-autonomous system in play. Uh, the challenge for these companies uh, going forward is going to be uh, reassuring the, the public and users that this technology is safe and experts would also argue that you're going to be needing to see greater attention from regulators to kind of set the scene for what is safe enough. Do you think that we're moving a little bit too fast here when it comes to uh, driverless technology? Well, it, what we're probably going to see here in the next uh, couple of years is that it, it's not going to be as sexy as we might think it would be. It's, it's, it's going to be in confined areas. Uh, robot taxis, perhaps, uh, delivery vehicles, that sorts of thing, really under a watchful eye of, of humans, um, making sure that these robots can do what they think they can do. You mentioned Tesla a moment ago. I I'm curious to get your thoughts here. Tesla is obviously pushing the envelope. Obviously, there is a lot of attention on them. Uh, it's great to see what they're doing because it seems like electric cars are, are the future. But what is your thought about the media coverage of Tesla? It seems as though every single time a Tesla is in an accident, it makes news. Do you think that the coverage is fair of the company? Well, Elon Musk, the CEO, was on Twitter yesterday really attacking the media, saying that the coverage is biased, that it's being driven by this desire for web clicks or uh, advertisers uh, such as from the bigger automakers that are his competitors. The, the, when you look at uh, the company itself, Tesla has very much benefited from all of that media attention in recent years. They spend very little on marketing. 
uh, compared to essentially uh, General Motors with Chevrolet or Ford, uh, which are some of the largest advertisers in the U.S. for television in particular. So it, it's a it's a kind of a love-hate relationship for Elon Musk. On one hand, he needs the media to get his message out about his new cars. Uh, on the other hand, because he's become such uh, a public figure, everything is under scrutiny. And in particular, when there's questions about new technology and is, is, the, is it safe and is it reliable? Tim, last question. Do you think at some point electric cars are the future that we won't have the combustion engines like we do now? I have to admit, I'm a gearhead. I love having an engine. I love the sound of it. I love everything about it. I can't see myself driving an electric car, even though I have no issue with them. It's just not something that I'm interested in. Are electric cars where we are going in the future? Well, if you look at the efforts by the Chinese government, and the China market is one of the is the largest automotive market in the world, it's really driving a lot of the adoption of electric vehicles because companies such as General Motors and Volkswagen and, and Tesla, they want to do well in China. And if they're investing in electric vehicles for that market, they're going to bring it here into the U.S. and into Europe as well. So the regulatory environment is pushing this. Uh, a company like Tesla has demonstrated that if you make the car fun and you make it sexy, uh, people are going to gravitate towards it. Yeah, it is a beautiful car, but uh, as I said, I, I, like, I like my engine. Tim Higgins uh, from uh, the Wall Street Journal, thank you.